This is a unique investment advice video for a number of reasons. First of all, I'm going to be giving you advice that you will never hear from the media or anyone else in the financial industry. Secondly, unlike most of the people giving you financial advice, I'm not trying to get your money. And lastly, unlike most of the people giving you financial advice, I'm actually a successful investor. My average annual rate of return over the last 10 years has been slightly over 20%. On the other hand, most people giving you financial advice are not successful investors. That's why they're asking you for your money to invest, because they can't succeed investing their own. My only motivation for making this video is to help people learn how to save correctly, because this nation used to be one of the richest, freest countries in the world, and now we've become a nation of debtors and wage slaves. The first thing you have to understand about investing is that you're operating in a system which is completely stacked against you. And no one in the media is going to tell you this, but the average American has come to recognize it subconsciously, and that's why hardly anyone saves money anymore. That's why we've become a nation of debtors. The first massive way in which the financial system is stacked against you is that we have a central bank. And this central bank is not set up to help the little guy. It's set up to basically take money from the average saver and transfer it to the banking industry. And the way that it does this is very subtle. You can review my other video the real story of money. But basically under a central banking system you will never gain long term holding any type of interest bearing certificate. Because if the banks paid out more in interest than they took in by inflating and skimming the currency then they would be losing money. So no investor who holds interest bearing certificates long term can ever succeed under a central banking system. That's not to say that you can't succeed as a speculator if you jump in and out of the bond market at the right times, but I'll go over speculation later. The next way in which the system is stacked against you also has to do with the central banking industry. You see, as the currency inflates every year, the government taxes you on the imaginary inflated value. So even if you hold something which really isn't gaining value, it's gaining value on paper and you're taxed on that. So in effect, a percentage of your savings are being confiscated by the government every year. One more reason that hardly anyone saves money anymore. A central banking system is of great benefit to the government and to the banking industry, but it's a great detriment to the average person trying to save money. So the main reason that most people fail at saving money is that we have a central bank and a constantly inflating currency. And this is why almost everyone has given up at saving and has instead gone into debt and basically then been forced into wage slavery. Next, when people realize they can't win with interest-bearing certificates, they're told, oh, invest in the stock market. Of course, corporate America and the financial industry are constantly putting out stories about what a good idea it is to invest in the stock market and how the value of the stock market is constantly going up. These are totally misleading stories. The real truth, which no one in corporate America is going to tell you, is that every company eventually goes bankrupt. Yes, some people do make money speculating in the stock market, but most people will lose in the end because all stocks eventually end up worthless. Now, if you're a genius and a speculator and you have a lot of time to devote to it, then maybe you can succeed. Very few people do. I don't even try because it's a system which works against you even beyond the normal inflation and the normal taxation on inflated value. It's just one more variable that's working against you. Now, before everybody gets too depressed about all of this, let me just say that once you understand that how the system works, you're free from future exploitation. And at that point, you have two choices. One is to try to just save money, and your other choice is to try to actually make gains and earn a living or earn a partial living as a speculator. So first, let me talk about earning a partial living as a speculator, since this is what everybody's trying to do. I think that very few people will succeed at this, and I've said this a number of times. Well, let's use me as an example. As I said before, I consistently have earned about a 20% rate of return. Now, once you take out true inflation, which I believe is around 10% nowadays, and then you take out taxes, that leaves me a true rate of return around 4%. Now, if I'm speculating with, let's say, half a million dollars, I'll earn $20,000 a year 
is my true value gained off of that half a million dollars that I'm speculating with. So I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news because I know everyone wants to imagine that they can earn lots of free money by speculating, by gambling in the markets, but even if you're unusually successful and even if you have an unusually large amount of money to speculate with, it's still hardly worth your trouble. The good news though is that it's much easier to save money than it is to profit or even break even as a speculator. Now, not many Americans do succeed at saving money, but once you know what to do, it's not that difficult. You basically save money by owning something of value. And if you own something like land or real estate or precious metals, you can usually find some legal method of protecting the inflated value from taxation. Whereas when you speculate, you're probably going to get stuck paying taxes on the profit, much of which is inflated profit that you've gained. So as I've said in other videos, my recommendation to the average American is just to save money by owning something of value. That's what humans have been doing for thousands of years and that's what's proven to work. Stocks always go broke and paper currencies always end up worthless, but things like precious metals and real estate generally retain their value. It's just not that complicated. Now I know a lot of people worry that the price of commodities and precious metals and real estate is constantly fluctuating. Well, yes, the price of everything is fluctuating under an inflating currency in particular. But the point is that if you own something of value, it's never going to fluctuate down to zero. <laughs> Whereas the paper currency and the stocks will eventually fluctuate down to zero. So by owning something of value, you are on a level playing field. Whereas when you're invested in stocks and interest-bearing certificates and currencies, you're not on, on a level playing field. You're in a system that's working constantly against you and it's very hard to overcome that. So sure, housing is probably in a bubble right now, so don't invest in it. Invest in something else. You're speculating, but at least you're speculating within commodities that actually have value. So you're speculating on a level playing field. Or if you don't want to speculate, just buy anything of value. Buy a house. Maybe it will go down in value a lot, but it's not going to go down in value to zero like your stock might. And once you learn to save and retain value and protect your savings from confiscation by taxation on the inflated value, then you no longer have to go into debt for everything. Then you're no longer a slave to your mortgage and therefore a slave to your job. Then you can start to really appreciate the freedom that our ancestors just took for granted.